光軍装甲騎兵士団長白銀のワルキューレことロザリアだ後のことは私に任せておけ武器を引き渡して走行しろ我が一族の名のもとに正々堂々と決闘だこれぞワルキューレが持つべき力だあんたが私の新しいお仲間会えて嬉しいよノエちゃんのスーパー魔法だよ今晩、みんなが眠ったら庭で会いましょうあんたさえよければ服を作ったり仕立て直したりしてあげるよどんな生地と色が好きなのかな Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the next major update, which has the heroes Rosalia and Noemi. So, because I don't plan to get either of these heroes, I don't plan to draw on the next major update banner at all. I'm going to do a briefer video in this one, so it's not going to be a full coverage video like the way to build videos, but it should still give you enough information to decide on whether you want to draw for these heroes or not. All right. So let's begin with Rosalia. Rosalia is part of the Legion of Glory, Princess Alliance, and Ares' reincarnation factions. She has a holy class that can equip heavy armor and heavy weapons, as well as a cavalry class. So because of this, she's a high mobility DPS character. Her holy class can actually move five tiles. Furthermore, she actually has two skills that allows her to act again. A one cost act again skill as well as chivalry. So, if you bring both of these skills, she actually has 11 movement in one turn. In addition to all of this, because Rosalia can be a holy class, she avoids the penalty against Lancer enemies. So, unlike Leon, who can barely damage Lancers, Rosalia has no issue taking them down. What's worth noting as well is her 3C skill, which is a damage skill, and her 1 cost movement skill both place down a sort of asylum on the map, which is a terrain effect on the map with some special effects. Linked to the sort of asylum, she has three unique skills the 3C skill, a single target skill, and an AoE skill. And all three of these skills will allow her to retreat three tiles after combat if she is within the range of a sort of asylum. Last but not least, the Sword of Asylum has increasing benefits, and these benefits are based on Rosalia's faith buffs. Rosalia gains faith buffs by either entering battle with the enemy or ending a turn with an enemy within two rings of herself. She can stack up to three faith buffs. The way it works is if she has zero faith buffs, the Sword of Asylum will provide plus 10 stats to any character that's within a tile of the Sword of Asylum. At one faith buff, so after she's done combat, for example, the Sword of Asylum now provides that stat buff to characters that are within two tiles of the Sword of Asylum. At two faith buffs, there is no additional effect. And then at three faith buffs, the Sword of Asylum will have the following effect. When attacking and entering battle, you restore 20% of the damage you deal. And this buff would apply to all characters within two tiles of the Sword of Asylum. So, the sword can be very, very useful if you can keep Rosalie alive and allow your characters to just heal after combat and get additional stats. Because the additional stats part is the main portion that would matter because it would allow you to do additional damage and take reduced damage. So, this is Rosalia in a nutshell. Now, with regards to Rosalia as a character, my personal opinion is that she's a waifu character. The next banner is really a banner of waifus. She is the prize of the next major update. But keep in mind that there is going to be a Rosalia and Elwyn banner in 2021, January 21st. So, given that most people should have a six star Elwyn by now, drawing on that banner is guaranteed to get you Rosalia. You might have to draw for two copies of Elwyn to trade for a Rosalia, but you will be guaranteed to get Rosalia on that banner. What's worth noting is that Rosalia does provide a bond upgrade 
for Mariel Salraf, who is released on the major update that should be coming to international server on February 11th of 2021. So three weeks after Rosalia's banner, Mariel will be released. Gear-wise, Rosalia should pretty much be using the exact same gear as Leon. Seal Guardian, Aeolus' Battle Armor, Fury of Tear, and then any attack accessory. And that would give her the maximum damage she can deal and provide a potential survival against ranged attacks. So in terms of PvP content, she would be a great single target striker and she'll fit very well into those high mobility single target boxes due to her ability to have potentially 11 movement. In addition to that, the Sword of Asylum buffing allies with plus 10% stats will mean that the follow-up attacks after her initial strike will all also do increased damage. So the combination of these two factors can make your single target box quickly overwhelm the enemy tanks and then force a battle of, I guess, attrition if you will. The big drawback to using her though is that I don't see any slots available for grinding her shards. Currently, from the previous banner, we have Reen and Ariane Rod. We have Licorice on the banner before that. We have Hobo Landius coming the following banner after the Rosalia and Noemi banner. So given all these other characters you have to grind, I really don't see any slot for grinding Rosalia. Unless, of course, you've recently started the game and you plan to build her up right away. Last but not least, I'm going to show the materials you require for upgrading Rosalia. So this is just a quick chart that I basically created from the Korean wiki. So you can kind of see which materials she needs for her class upgrades as well as for her awakening battles. So just based on this, you can start farming up for materials if you plan to build her. All right, so with all this covered, I'm going to demonstrate a few battles of Rosalia in action in PvP content. The following clip is of a top 64 to 32 match on the Chinese server in Season 5. We see here that player 1 has Juggler, Liana, Ares, Claret, and Deedlet, while player 2 has Landius, Deedlet, Yusuke, Rosalia, and Iris. So let's just get started and take a look at the battle. Player 1 is holding back to start, and player 2 is just setting up. So both sides are just prepping for their assault initially. Now, Juggler activates his faction buff here. And we get to see a very interesting scenario occur. So Iris teleports Rosalia forward a bit. And now Rosalia charges forward with chivalry, moves forward some more, drops her Sword of Asylum to act again once more, and then launches out her 3C skill, which drops another Sword of Asylum. Because Juggler didn't activate Triton, this attack of Rosalia just wiped out Juggler right away. The second battle of the same match is more interesting because player 1 doesn't make that same mistake of not activating Triton right away. So parties are basically the exact same. Player 1 still has Juggler, Ares, Liana, Claret, and Deedlet, while player 2, this time around, brings Landius, Deedlet, Rosalia, Iris, and the last character was changed to Listel. So let's jump in and get started on this fight. So Claret, once again, you know, activating her higher mobility. Juggler starts off with a Triton. And Gospel is used to buff up Claret to start. So that she would have maximum attack value when she strikes. Juggler is also buffed with Gospel. Uh, 
Next, Peace of Mind on Landius is activated to guard everybody. And Deedlet activates Sea of Miracles here to provide plus 15% damage buff to everybody. So Deedlet moving back for player 2. Player 1 getting ready to strike. And things start off with Ares. In he goes with Noble Charge. It's not enough damage to kill off 1100 defense Landius. Iris responds by casting a single target heal on Landius. And now Claret jumps in. Bloodline Magic Armor activates on Landius, and thus he tanks that first strike. And then Claret wraps around for a second strike, and this second strike doesn't do enough damage to kill Landius at all. In large part because Claret no longer had the Gospel. So without Gospel, without a faction buff, she just doesn't do enough damage to take out this Landius. Deedlet jumps in and takes out Ares with her strike. And Juggler now jumps in using Secret Beast him to land next to Landius, locking him down and doing a bunch of AoE damage to Player 2's party. And a follow up from Deedlet, charging forward, and Deedlet uses a single target strike to take down Iris. So now we get to see Rosalia in action. At long last. She activates Chivalry, drops her Sword of Asylum, and here we see that she gained two stacks of Faith. And then she does her single target strike which is her 3C. With all of those buffs though, she does not kill a juggler with Triton and Gospel active. So despite having you know plus 10% stats, having plus 30% from Chivalry and everything, it's not enough damage to kill Juggler. The Stell does a follow-up single target strike and that's also not enough damage to take down Juggler. So it shows how tanky Juggler is. Yana now comes up for player 1 and provides a lot of healing to Juggler, raising up to pretty much full health. Deedlet on the other side gospels herself in preparation to attack yet again. Claret now wraps around using her 3C skill and look at that, Claret actually killed herself attacking Rosalia. So that was an interesting fight to see. Okay, Of course, once again, a huge part of this should be the fact that A, Claret started off damage, so no last rights. And B, Claret once again does not have a faction buff or even a gospel buff. So she ends up killing herself into Rosalia. Enemy juggler strikes Landius, and this is actually the first time Landius died, so he revives. Claret did not kill the Landius earlier. And now Landius continues to tank pretty much everything. Reaper's Touch is now applied onto Liana. So you can see, this battle has devolved to a 4v3 where there's basically no method for player 1 to wipe out Landius at this point. We do get an interesting move here where Deedlet gospeled up Juggler instead of herself and then used her Windcutter Dagger to attack the enemy Deedlet instead of attacking the enemy Landius that was already damaged. But I guess he assumed that Deedlet infantry class can't kill Landius. Now we have various characters setting up. Juggler using Triton, Landius guarding, and Listel tosses out Mindbore on the enemies. Liana does an act again on Deedlet, and Heal Reversal is really smashing up Deedlet's hit points. But the goal for player 2 really at this point is to take down Juggler, because there is a Deedlet and Liana to keep him healthy. But if Juggler is taken down, game is over. So we see why player 1 activated act again now. It was so that she could start providing healing to Juggler this way, Sea of Miracles and so on. Now at this point, Rosalia, once again, Chivalry, 
Once again, Sword of Asylum. And now, the single target strike. And down goes Juggler. So, now it's 4v2. Battle's all but over. Really, it was all but over as soon as Claret failed to kill Landius. But it continues on for a bit longer. And there we go. The combination of Listel providing heal reversal and then Rosalia doing the single target strikes finished off Juggler, ending the fight. So now that Rosalia has been covered, let's talk about the other hero of the banner, Noemi. So Noemi's primary role is as a single target mage that has 4 range. Her, she can only be mage class, there's no other class options for her, and her factions are Legion of Glory and once again Ares' reincarnation faction. The thing about her 4 range attacks though, is that you have to use her 3C skill, which is similar to a transformation. It gives her a buff that will last for the next 2 attacks. Unfortunately, this skill has a cooldown of 5 turns. So that means she can use the skill, attack 2 turns with 4 range, and then after that she's reduced to 2 range for the following 3 turns. Furthermore, she does have a talent that can activate twice. It activates on the very first turn after she acts, and it also activates when Noemi dies. This talent will give everybody in her team a buff that reduces damage taken by the next attack by 20, 30, 40, or 50% given her star level. The talent is nice, but it's not necessary because it only protects you against the first attack and it doesn't really make up for her flaws. So overall, she sees no use in PvP and thus she's basically a PvE oriented character. A very great looking PvE oriented character. As I mentioned previously, this is the banner of the waifus. But ultimately, because she can only attack at 4 range for 2 turns, you can basically say that young Jessica can do everything she does but better. And as a result, I can't really recommend getting her. At this time, Noemi does not provide any bonding to any other characters. So this is pretty much the conclusion. If you do plan to use her, for PvE content, you just need an SSR set of gear, like any set of SSR gear. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. So if you do get Noemi and use her, the following are the materials she needs for her class upgrades. And with that, my video coverage of Noemi and Rosalia is finished. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful to you. And on that note, Nitro out.